Greetings, greetings, sons and daughters of the Most High King. Welcome. God is good all the time. This day, he has given it to us to enjoy. And I know that in some parts of the world, wherever you are, some of you are already about to go and sleep but God has been faithful. I know that this day is not just a day, but a day that God has ordained in your life. And uh, these are the small, small things that we have to look at every single time, that things don't happen by chance, but God is there in control of the entire universe. I'm going to share four things you can embrace when nobody believes in you. We face moments like that in life. Nobody believes in you. You are all by yourself because it's like, can anything good come out of here? Can anything good come out of this person? A good example is a small child who doesn't know anything is abandoned before birth by his or her own father. Men run away and they don't want to have anything to do with the child. But who takes over that child? If you are like me, I've observed so much that children like this turn out to be so great. And those fathers that abandon these kids are going hundreds and hundreds steps back. And these children are successful. These fathers are not able to say, please help me. Who takes over a child like that? God. Because he has plans before you are even formed. And fathers that abandon their own children think that if they abandon the children, these children will amount to nothing, will be nobodies. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, this is not something that I planned actually. I'm just throwing it in because the Holy Spirit is pointing it out. Before you were born, I knew you right? So before a man and a woman decides to make this child, God has already planned. So it means that your parents are God-ordained. Even if one of them may think, oh, this was a mistake. And this should tell you right now, if you're in that situation, that you are not a mistake. God knew you, ordained your life, planned it, and is going to fulfill it before you were even born. He has it all planned out for you. And you shouldn't embrace lies to say you are not going to amount to anything. And some of the people won't even tell you that you are not going to amount to anything. They'll just act. They'll be quiet. Like they love you. Like they are there for you. But they'll be tramping you down, trashing you down. Anything that seems like it's going to work in your life, they'll trash it down. They'll give advice that they know that is to stop you and you because you don't have any advice from anyone. You trust these people. They'll come and advise and you will take that advice and lose the opportunity. But God is for you. I want to share things that you should embrace when you are in that situation. Maybe a child somewhere is not watching. You who is watching, we give thanks to God and we pray for those children that God will take care of them. God will take charge over any orphan, anyone that is being trashed, maybe in marriage, and your own husband thinks you are nobody. Anything you do is not good enough. Why? Maybe because you are not doing anything. Whatever you are doing at home is not counted. People get in the business of trashing others and use their mouths as fire to burn other people's destinies. But God knew you. God is on the throne. He elevates at the right time. Isaiah 60 verse 22 says, I myself will do it at an appointed time. When time is right, I will make it happen. You may be a child somewhere, an orphan somewhere, who is in people's homes from one house to another, and you are being trashed. And the worst things that are happening, you will find orphans, that are being abused in those homes. We pray that God 
should give every orphan a guardian, should turn anyone who takes care of these children into angels. Let Father God take care of every orphan. And you who is the big person now, who has come out of that name of being an orphan, you are not an orphan. Children don't know much. No one speaks for them. Us, we should speak for them. God is speaking for them, but God speaks through people. And we pray that God will take a hold of certain mothers, certain uncles, uh, fathers who take care of orphans and make them compassionate towards lives like that, towards souls like that. Children, can anything good come out of this? We live in a society where to be kept, you need to have something. That's when they'll keep you. If you don't have anything, they'll keep you, but you have to be a slave somehow in that home. Very few people who look after an orphan just like that, including relatives, including siblings of the deceased who turn out to be monsters after the parents of those kids are normal. They will take everything and now they will start abusing the children. If that is you, I pray that whatever has happened in the past, you coming to the Lord, knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he is the healer. He will heal you. You will know that God ordained your life. God planned your life before you were born. And any circumstance, anything that has robbed you of your joy, robbed you of your parents, God is the restorer. He knows how to make your life great. He knows how to cause you to stop crying, to wipe your tears, and he will do it. Hallelujah. You are rising. You will be strengthened by him. He's ordering your steps the way he formed you in your mother's womb. Even if your mom died just after giving birth to you, that doesn't matter. God knows how to restore your life. Can anything good come out of this? This is what is happening a lot in homes in this world. It's happening a lot. And uh, it's something that I was prompted to share. And I hope that what I'm going to share will help you feel the love of the Father. Hallelujah. Why do I think this message is important today? Because people believe what they see and they don't go beyond the natural. They don't go beyond what they can see. Just the way you look today, they might not think you can amount to anything tomorrow. They won't see the future. Only God knows it. And because you are also around such people and you are feeling trashed, feeling belittled because of your circumstances, you start to believe that. You start to believe what people see and say. You start to think God is not for you and nothing good can come out of your life. But something good is coming out of you because God has planted that seed within you, seed of greatness, success, all the good things that you need in life have already been done for you. And he says, I, at the right time, at the appointed time, I'll make it happen. This is happening to you, whether in marriage, in that home, maybe you are struggling around your siblings because you lost your job, and now no one believes in you, no one thinks your prayers are going anywhere. I want you to believe this, four things I'll mention here. Don't believe anything else. Number one, believe that Father God is good. When your belief is so strong that God is good, and because he's good, he's able to do good things. He's not doing bad things. And that situation is not coming from him. He has good things for you. You won't lose hope. You won't be discouraged. You will move forward with so much determination. Life will begin to make sense. Your prayers will start to make sense. Even when you don't see you, go to the scriptures and say, the just shall live by faith because you know God is good. Sometimes we don't believe that God is good. We just say it. Oh, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. But when you are in that situation, inside of you, you are thinking, if God was good, hmm, this situation was not going to be like this. 
and you're just praying religiously. You just go to church because you have to do it. There's no strong belief that God is good. Everything about God is good. Himself is good and his love. So he loves you so much. He cares about you. In that situation, the solution is believing God is good. And the moment you realize God is so good and he, he loves you, he can do anything for you, you won't need people's approval. You won't need to do so much to prove. You won't need to buy love. You won't worry about who says what because you know where you are going. You know whose you are. Knowing where you are going and the purpose God has for you, it will make your walk with the Lord less painful. This is why I put this one as the first point. Don't lose sight. It is always well with the righteous. And you are the righteous one. Number two, you have to know that you have access to everything good. The storehouse is open for you. And this was done already on the cross for you. This is why Jesus paid the price and died on that cross to die so that you can be connected to the blessing. The blessing is already yours. And as you are in that state, we all have equal rights to what the Father has. This inheritance that God has for us, all of us have equal rights. We qualify. You qualify even in that state. That's why I put that first point to say you have to know that God is good. Once you know that, you will know that the reason why Jesus went to die on that cross was for you because the Father is good. And it was to give us the inheritance. And that inheritance has everything in it. Everything you desire. It is already connected to you. You should know that as long as you believe, nothing shall be impossible with you. If you look at the Bible in Mark chapter 9 verse 23, Jesus said to whoever believes, nothing shall be impossible with that person. Nothing shall be impossible for that person. So God has already laid all these things for us to walk in, to get that blessing, knowing that as long as we embrace the goodness of the Lord, knowing that God is good and that he died on the cross to connect us to the blessing and understanding that nothing can be impossible to whoever believes in Jesus because he has already conquered everything. He has conquered sickness, pain, stagnation, delay, you name it, anything that is happening. Whoever doesn't believe in you, whoever doesn't think anything can come out of you, their opinion doesn't matter anymore because you have embraced these things. You know you are not alone. Anyone can run away from you. People can do all kinds of evil against you. But as long as you understand that God is for you and not against you, nothing shall be impossible for such a person. Nothing can be impossible for you. And God says, at the appointed time, he makes all things beautiful. At the appointed time, he will make it happen. Nothing is impossible is a very big word in Christianity. It means nothing. Nothing can overcome you because the overcomer, the one who has overcome the world lives inside of you. God has given you permission to dream big. He has given you permission to dream for anything to ask him anything and never to allow anyone to dictate your future because all of us don't know. So whoever is belittling you, whoever is trashing your life, saying all kinds of things, looking at your situation and prophesying doom over your life, they are wasting their time. But you won't know that they are wasting your time if you don't embrace these things. You have to know them for yourself. That's why reading the word of God is important to understand what God says about your life. You are not an orphan. John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says, To all those who accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, he gave them power to be called sons and daughters of the Most High God. You are a son. You are a daughter of God. He has adopted you, no longer slaves, no longer an orphan. You are no longer a stepchild. If you believe this, you won't behave like a slave, like an orphan, or like a beggar begging for this, begging for that, begging for people's opinion and approval. You know you are a son 
and a daughter or a daughter of the Most High God. To those who believe this, he gave them power. You are empowered to live this life as an overcomer. Overcoming daily, hallelujah, overcoming all the time. As you know, a son or a daughter doesn't behave like a slave. When you go to your father, your earthly father, do you behave like a slave? Do you ask like a beggar? Do you go to your dad and do all kinds of things around him, begging or behaving like an orphan? There's a difference when a daughter is asking or a son is asking and when an orphan is asking or someone who is helping you in your house, your helper. There's a difference. So let's behave like sons and daughters of the king because the kingdom belongs to us. That kingdom, the domain belongs to us. And that storehouse is open over your life, is open for you. Let's access the inheritance. Jesus has already paid for it. He has already paid the full price. And number four is to know that you are valuable before the Lord. You are significant. You have been bought. Even in that state, you are valuable before God. You are beautiful. You are enough. And when you understand this, you won't care who says what. You won't care so much about people's opinion, what they think about you. And dictating what your future will look like. You won't care so much about that. This is where we get misled because because of low self-esteem and not knowing whose we are, we fall for anything that is called love and people can say anything over our lives. You are significant in this earth. You were created for a purpose and your value doesn't depend on what you have or who you look like right now, your value doesn't depend on that. It depends on what God has planned in your life. It depends on what God has for you, what God has written in the Bible. Better understand the word of God for yourself. And then you come out. Some of us, if we knew what we know now, mm, many things would have been avoided. But everything has its own place in life. There's no time wasted. That was a training ground, and now I can say glory to God. I know many of you have gone through so much, and through that pain and sorrow, you have come out great. God has shaped your future. God has shaped your life, and this is what is important to God. You have all you need. You are connected to the source. So you cannot be disconnected by people's words, no matter what they say, whatever they can throw at your life. Let them speak, but you stand in God's presence, connected to the source. In that presence, in his secret place, God shapes everything, perfects everything. And once you'll be out of that situation, people will say, wow, she has proved them wrong. He has proved them wrong. No, it's not you who has done that. God has proved them wrong because his word cannot be stopped. What he has promised cannot be stopped by any evil attack from anywhere. No matter who stands against your life, God is the one who has the final say. This should comfort you so much. God has absolute power. No one, no power anywhere can compete with him. He has it all and all power belongs to him. What is happening to you right now is temporal. That situation is bound to change, bound. It is in chains right now until it turns around for your good. Bound to change, hallelujah. So we give glory to God. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for staying motivated, for staying connected to the source, God himself who cannot change. He shall not lie. And because of this, he will reward you openly. If you are here and you haven't subscribed yet, Please do so because you are being part of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Continue commenting, sharing your testimonies, your impacting lives, and God is pleased. You are spreading the gospel by sharing your comments. May you and your families be blessed. Stay blessed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.